All right, so I said, balance the suspect's right to a fair trial with public's right to know. Consider the implications of identifying criminal suspects before they face legal charges. What does that mean? Well, you know, oftentimes we, we have a difference between like, there's there's different states, you know, like most, most, most publications, most print publications will have a rule that if a person is arrested, they don't print names. But because there's a difference between being pr arrested and charged and being uh, found guilty. Being arrested merely means that in the moment, the officers thought that there could be a case against the person, that there could be probable cause, and they arrested the person. Charging means that the state's attorney or a grand jury has reviewed the grounds for the arrest and determined that there is enough reason to charge the person. In which case, we now probably would report a name in, signif in significant cases. Not all cases, but in significant cases, we would do it. Now, in some really significant cases, like a murder or a big crime, we might, we might simply report an arrest but, or even suspicion. But those are only in pretty rare cases. But, you know, as, you, as, as, the, as the crime and the public impact, like, for example, if somebody gets arrested for shoplifting, the police could have been wrong. And when they get charged, maybe you name them. But I'm not even sure naming them when they're charged with shoplifting is as big a deal because the public is not exactly harmed in a major way by that. Now, if the person had, uh, you know, hit a child or, um, you know, uh, you know, been, you know, was dealing drugs in a school zone, then maybe naming them at charging point is really reasonable. So there's different levels of this, and you kind of just have to go with whatever the norm is for your eight, your news organization. But at the same time, I mean, if you're going to ask how do we set those norms, I would say the public's right to know has to be balanced against the person who will be harmed by reporting it and their ability to get a fair trial if everybody knows they've done something. So you have to balance those things. Now, with a murder, the fact that somebody has been killed makes that the public wants to know, and the public has a right to know if, you know, the murder is on the loose, if somebody's been arrested, and potentially who the person is, right? They have a greater right to know, because that has a greater impact. That, has, that, is, that is a very significant issue. And so as you, you know, you know, kind of as the crime goes up, as the significance or severity or the person in power or whatever goes up, then the public's right to know may overwhelm the suspect's right to not have their name used early on. But you need to keep in mind and think about it. Don't just do these things willy-nilly. Have a reason. Have a justification. Don't just report it because you can. And then consider the long-term implications of the extended reach and permanence of publication. Provide updated and more complete information as appropriate. So, like I said, in today's day and age, you put something online, it will stay there forever. You know, make sure to update the information as appropriate. Okay? If you find out later you were wrong, you need to correct it and you need to make sure that gets linked. That way people know that. And you need to realize that when you do it, you can't just do it willy-nilly because the case is, is that these things do have long-term implications.